Okay, today I'm going to be talking about centripetal acceleration and force and some applications of them. All right. In the last video, we talked about the derivation of centripetal acceleration and how this acceleration is acting towards the center of the circle. It's due to a, a velocity of the object that wants to fly off on a tangent. And it really depends on how fast the object is going and how far away it is from the center of the circle. Now, if you look at this equation, you can actually see that the speed has more impact than the, the distance it is out. In other words, like if you double the velocity, you're going to actually quadruple the acceleration. And the radius really only has, um, like if you double the radius, it's only going to go down to one, one half of what it was. Um, so you get kind of like more bang for your buck with the, the acceleration than you do with uh, radius. Um, also, from Newton's second law, we're going to be easily able to derive this equation, which I'll do in a moment as well. And we're going to do a couple of little applications of those. And then more specific applications of those will be found in the later video. So here we go. Let's look at an equation or a problem with centripetal acceleration. So you've got a bobsled, and it's coming down to shoot, and it's making this turn, and then it's making this turn. And what we want to know is, Bobsled contains turns with a radius of 33 meters and 24 meters. Find the centripetal acceleration at each turn for a speed of 34 and express the answers as multiples of g. Now, which one do you think should give you uh, more acceleration? The one with the bigger radius or the one with the smaller radius? Well, looking at the equation for centripetal acceleration, you should be able to figure that out. Here we go. We have the equation for centripetal acceleration of vt squared over r, and we're keeping v the same. So what happens when we make r smaller? a should get larger. So here we go. Just plugging into the equation for the, the bigger circle, we get 35 meters per second. And I'm going to take a little time now to explain what a g is. 1g is just really basically one gravity. Um, so if I have this in meters per second, and I divide it by 9.8 meters per second equaling 1 g, this will tell me how many g's I actually have. So I'm pulling 3.6 g's, which means it's like 3.6 times what we normally feel due to gravity. And when we have a smaller radius, it goes up, just as we expected it would. All right. Recall from Newton's second law um, that when a net external force acts on an object of mass m, the acceleration that results is directly proportional to the net force and has a magnitude that is inversely proportional to the mass. The direction of the acceleration is in the same direction as the net force. So here this is. This is what Newton's second law says. If we rewrite that in a more common term, that some of the force equal mass times acceleration. Now, Let's see how that applies with centripetal force and centripetal acceleration. In the uniform circular motion, there must be a net force that produces that centripetal acceleration. And that centripetal force is the name given to the net force required to keep an object moving in a circular path. The direction of the centripetal force always points towards the center of the circle. Um, and the reason it does is because the acceleration points towards the center of the circle. So here we have F is equal to MA. And what MA is is in VT squared over R, or V squared over R. OK, it's important to note that there's no such thing as centripetal force itself. It's always caused by something else. Like, for example, if a car is going around a circle um, on a road, how does it stay in the circle? It's the force of friction between the tires and the road. Um, take a stopper and swing it in a circle. Um, you see me do that in class many times. What's holding it in the circle? The string's holding the circle. If it disappeared, it would fly off on a tangent. If the, car, the friction between the tires and the road disappeared, the car would fly off on a tangent. This is also true with um, uh, planets going around the sun. Uh, assuming it's a circular orbit, um, which we can assume that, um, even though it's not exactly true, 
what would happen if gravity disappeared? Well, gravity is the centripetal force needed to hold the planet in a circle. Without gravity, it would fly off on a tangent. All right, so we know that there's no such thing as centripetal force itself. It's really caused by other forces. All right, here's an example. You have a model airplane. Uh, it's being swung in a circle. And basically, the upward lift force is equal to the weight of the plane. So we're not worried about it in the vertical direction. We're only worried about what the force is needed to keep it in this circle. Okay. Um, we know that the length of the string is 17 meters. And we know the plane is moving at 19 meters per second. And we want to find this tension. Well, this tension is actually equal to the centripetal force needed to hold the plane in a circle. Because what's keeping the plane in the circle? Centripetal force. What's causing the centripetal force? This tension. Okay. So, centripetal force is equal to the tension, which is equal to m v squared over r. And there you go. It's not that difficult. Key thing to understand is there's no centripetal force itself. It's being caused by something else, the string in this case. All right, now let's look at another example. Okay, we have a circus. In a circus, a man hangs upside down from a trapeze. His legs are bent over and his arms are hanging downward, holding up his partner. Is it harder for the man to hold the partner when the partner hangs straight down and is stationary or when they're swinging? Well, it seems pretty difficult to understand this initially, but if, he, if he's hanging with her hanging straight down, like let's say he's hanging and she's hanging straight underneath him, the only tension that he really has to hold up is whatever she weighs. But if they're going through an arc, not only does he have to pull, hold up her weight, but he has to actually accelerate her towards the center of the circle as well. And in the next few sections, you will see some applications of problems like that. And we'll do more problems like that in class as well.